Alright, welcome everyone, and we're starting off the stream for the Victorious Amateur Series Week 1. We got ourselves Nameless Entropy versus Rising Tide. I am Crims, and I am joined by Ty Tom on the desk, and we actually get to do a pregame segment, segment for once. Ty Tom, what do you think about these two teams? And we have a new team on the riff for Nameless here. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so, so I'm, I'm going to talk, talk about Nameless first because, because I know these players a lot more because I watched it during tryouts. Um, would, uh, would the star player of this team, team would, for me, would be Healthy Ego, Ego the mid laner. Uh, during, uh, during tryouts, he put in an amazing performance on Yone, and, and he, plays he plays those, those like playmaking type champions, champions like Aurelia, Yone, Silas, like, like those hard carry type champions. During, during tryouts, he put on an amazing performance during those, so I'd like to see that performance drag into Victorious and carry the team to victory. And, and I haven't, I haven't really seen, seen much, much of Merit, but from, but from what, what I heard, he's just like a power, power farmer. farmer. And he also does, does like uh, sets up like uh, gang, gang with his teams. teams. Um, um, so, so like he would, he would just like be like, oh, so which side should I gang, gang stuff like that? that. And, and that's, that's where he goes. But like from his like champion on OPGG, it's like mostly power farmers, like Belize, Kindred, Graves. Um, Mr. Sunlight, uh. I haven't, I haven't heard much about, about him, honestly, I'm going to be honest. Oh, they're, they're using the e -sub, e-sub, right? Yeah, I, 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 have not, I have not researched the e-sub, e so I will not know about top lane. Well, we, I uh, wouldn't expect that of you because it is e-sub, so. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to know everything, Titan. There's I'm, no I'm gaps in knowledge allowed here. Uh, apologies. Will... Next, next time, next time. You should feel that. Anyway, keep going. Caden and Zephyr, they're just those also playmaking type supports and ADCs. Uh, Caden's most, most played is Jinx at 72, at 72 games, games, and his next, next played is Jin at 20, so kind of, kind of a Jinx OTP if you would say, say so. so. Uh, so he plays those scaling type uh, ADCs that you just, just want to farm and get your items on. on. Is that war on, on Nautilus and Senna, Senna and Pike? Those, those like roaming, roaming type or sitting in lane type supports as well that he can just help support Caden really well with because those champions match really well with each other, which I really like. Um, and yeah, and yeah that's, that's it for Nameless that I know so, know so far. far. And, they, and have, they have been, this, this is their first ever uh, game. game. This, this is a brand new roster, roster so excited to see what they would put on. All right, so we have ourselves a melee playing mid laner. We'll see if we get some Doan B esque plays out of him. <laughs> and I think that's going to set them up, though, for not so meta play outside of Silas, as we have ourselves the game starting up right now. So yeah, outside of Silas, maybe even Yone a little bit, not very meta, so they're going to have to develop some pretty unique strategies here. As uh, Cassiopeia ban has been cited on the bans list here, which is very interesting. Very, very interesting. interesting. I, I did not, not see Cassiopeia on Nameless. Yeah, it's not one of his most played, but it is a target ban, so they might be having a unique counter strategy here from Rising Tide. Mm -hmm. And What do you expect to see for... Uh, their first pick from the side of Nameless Entropy. What's their power picks here? Uh, uh, probably one, an ADC support, like, like maybe like Jinx Nautilus, or maybe just on a Nautilus for an early aggressive lane, lane. Jinx Nautilus for aggressive slash scaling type lane. lane. Um, because because just mostly hyper carries. For a yeah. second here. So yeah, I believe the E-sub is going to cause some loss of bands, and they oh, did yeah. not set it up previously, so they're just going to wait them out. Which is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. However, uh, yeah, now we can go back to Ty Tom's point. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I just, just honestly like they're, they're going to be picking probably like a bot lane here, early bot lane, lane uh, duo, duo. Uh, um, just, just to like, like guarantee those picks because the, the Jinx seventy two games and all the fifty four games both are pretty comfortable on this champion. So getting those out of the way and making sure like you get through draft is something that would be pretty interesting to see. Um, um, they, they could, could also, also like pick, pick a jungler, jungler maybe like Graze or maybe like Diego, like Diego as well. Some, Some of those like, like early game, like, like power farm champions I were talking about. Um, yeah. so those are the two types of things I would see. Unless, Unless they, they decide, decide to like first pick one, one of their mid laners or top laners, but I, I doubt it. I think that I, well, unless someone wants to first pick Renekton, I don't think we're uh, going to see it. All right. Uh, Trundle off the board, so Poppy is going to be available, and Sejuani here. This is going to be most likely a flex pick. Otherwise, I don't see why you would pick it so early. And mm -hmm. that means that Sejuani could be filling in the jungle or top role here. 
And Sejuani actually has a pretty good matchup into Ragnacton, so I don't know if that's what they're thinking of. <laughs> as we have ourselves the double oh, counter for red side R1, R2. Sivir, very strong AD carry, Titom. Very. Are we hoping for a Sivir play here? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, Sivir is still really good, good even after those like, like slight minion, minion nerfs. Like, like she's still just going to clear the wave with one rotation of spells. She's going to be pushing that in. And now I expect to see like one of those roaming supports. From yeah, just because the numbers go one. down doesn't actually mean it was a nerf, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Sivir can spell shield Sejuani engage. We'll see, though. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also just uh, super layer CC, so Sivir cannot do that. So I'm not saying that is true. she's invulnerable. Lilia. Lilia, Lilia. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to say this. It is a flex pick. That, Are that they going to do it, though? I, but, I as you not. said, this is a farming jungler dream here, Lilia. Although not not... There's one tank, usually you want a little bit more, as we have a Jinx Steel coming out, and a Renata Glass, Renata. very good counter engage. Mm -hmm. We'll see what Nameless Entropy go with. I see Yumi is available. I think Yumi, Yumi is, Yumi is OP, and the, you know, Zetwar has a 60% win rate on five games. Are we going to see Yumi? Oh, no, they pick Aurelia. Oh, well, they picked Aurelia first. Oh, they're afraid of the Sejuani Aurelia combo. Hmm. Yeah, I really is very good with Sejuani. Can insta stack her passive in mid lane, and basically it is almost a guaranteed kill. And as you said, their mid laner plays melee champions anyway, so definitely in the wheelhouse of healthy ego. Mm -hmm. Kali Ben coming out. Most, most played champion for GURPS. All right, Kali getting taken off the board here. But yeah, I think we got to talk about support because support's going to be huge depending on who they pick for the side of Nameless Entropy here. What are you expecting? What do you want? And maybe make some points before certain champions get banned like Yumi. And I there's really Yumi. think they should have took Yumi. <laughs> um, yeah, I yeah, think, I think an Enchanter pair this time would be good just because we're not as like that counter engaged champion. So picking like Nautilus or Pike is a little bit on the grief side, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, uh, it's like a super grief side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Renata, Renata is just gonna like counter, counter you entirely. entirely. So, so picking like, like an enchanter with like, like Lulu, Soraka, Soraka Yumi, like you said, but stand out now. Like, like those, those champions, champions keep Soraka. Yeah, see, look, the Soraka. best pairs for oh, wow. support just got banned out. So I yeah. feel like this is a huge draft mistake for Oh, they're picking Nautilus. Yeah, they're gonna go for Nautilus. I mean, look, Nautilus can engage on Jinx very well. This is true, but Renata counter engage. Might make it tough for Irelia Nautilus. I mean, look, Irelia doesn't play well into Renata either, correct? Mm -hmm. um, um, but I, I do think... Here's, here's the problem with picking Enchanter early against Sivir. It's, it's like Sivir like gets to free lane, lane like, like solo, because, because you can't really engage on Sivir as Renata Jinx. Jinx. Um, um, so Nautilus just gets to like free roam while Sivir just does their thing bot lane. Like, Sivir's not really in much danger bot lane. So, yeah. So Nautilus gets activated. some Nautilus roams here, but... I mean, eventually the team is going to have to 5v5, and that is where I see some really good value mm -hmm. out of this Renata Glass pick here. As Silas gets picked up here, I, I'm actually going to throw a question mark ping at this Silas here. As I don't think that's a good matchup versus Irelia at all. Um, it, it could be, be for the ultimates. ultimates. Nautilus ultimate, ultimate is really nice on Silas. Get, get that count, get that like point and click CC on, on one, one of the champions. champions. Okay, I'm gonna research that while you bring up more points. Um, they, they pick Mordekaiser, Mordekaiser, which I think is a nice blind pick, but they are extremely AP heavy now, and, and it's solo Jinx, um, AD, um, so our source of damage. So, I, I do think apparently I'm wrong. Silas has a 51% win rate against Irelia overall across all the fields. So we'll but see. if it's not 100%, then it's not exactly <laughs> counter, right? If it's not 100%, it's not good. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> this set oh, coming out. So just those bruiser type uh, uh, champions coming out top lane. lane. Team, Team fights are going to be interesting. All right, Mordekaiser going to be on the field here. And set going to be locked in probably in that top side. So we have ourselves two comps. Titan, it's your job here to dictate to us what we're going to be looking for in the game. What is the goal? And just for fairness here, because we're not biased, what does Rising Tides comp want to do? Um, Think so they have her. two types of things, just because of Renata disengage and then like Sejuani Silas wanting to engage. So 
it'd be interesting to see because they can either pull the trigger or let the trigger be pulled on them because of Renata, Sejuani. So honestly, it's just basically at like the moment it happens. So we just have to see like what is the, like the positioning of everybody, like what's the state of the game, and what do they want to do at that time. Like if they're ahead, then engaging is be really nice. If they're behind, then letting them get engaged on is also pretty good for them as well. You That's okay. what I think. All right, now let's flip it over into Nameless. What do we want to see from them? Nameless is a full dive comp. They have Lilia, they have Irelia, they have Nautilus, Sivir. Like, all those champions want to go in. All those champions want to run down the enemy team. Um, they're going to be looking for those picks of Nautilus hooks. Those Nautilus Rs should be really nice in the games because it's free knockoff on Jinx. And putting that Jinx behind. And Irelia, Lily, they can all just stack MR and not die during the game. So I do think it's just like a full rundown comp from Nameless. Yeah, full rundown comp and Sivir to speed boost all their melees as well. I really think that when it comes to Sivir and melees, there's a lot of synergy there. It helps your team get in, get on that back line here. And it's very important to take out a Jinx in these team fights. But however, I feel like they're going to be running into a wall, and that wall is Renata Glass. Do you agree or disagree? <laughs> I 100% agree. I think that's exactly why Renata is like a perfect champion here, even though it was picked like a D3, even then it's like a perfect pick, especially into like champs that want to dive. And I think they just have to play around that. Um, if Renata, like, they have to play around Renata, like, missing her ult. Or like getting yeah. a bad ult, and hopefully it doesn't land on Irelia or Sivir. Um, but yeah, I think as long as like they play smart around Renata and maybe even get a pick off on her before she presses R, um, it's a winnable for a Nameless. But Rising Tide has that like counter engage type comp on them. Yeah. So it just all depends on how it's played out. All right, let's talk about how this is going to start playing out with the early game. What lane do you think is going to be the prime focus for both teams in that early game phase um for rising tide i do think top should be winning for mordekaiser from what i remember uh mid mid is like skill matchup in my opinion even though size does have a higher win rate i think mostly the focus would be bot lane because they it's jinx server hyper carry so getting your hyper carries mobile early is yes, amazing. Um, especially for nameless because Jinx being the solo AD threat, you do want to like shut her down so that she doesn't like, you know, get that three item power spike in like twenty minutes and run down the entire team. Because if you put Jinx behind, then it's like, oh, they had these four magic champions, so I just stack them R and I don't die again. So, I do think for for both teams, spot lane will be the heaviest priority. Rising Tide to get Jinx ahead and Nameless to get Jinx behind. So it's be interesting to see. Uh, that is a good point. If Jinx is behind, I very you. little, actually just none, no AD damage. So yeah. uh, you're right. If you once you build the you build MR and you kill Jinx, I don't see how Rising Tide wins a team fight. That is true. But there's a lot of fuel for Jinx. Renata Sejuani, like it's going to be really hard to get on Jinx just because of the amount of CC and amount of anti engage that Rising Tide have. So I think that's mm -hmm. they're playing around. I mean, they get the Mordekaiser ult for peel. Mordekaiser they have well. Renata Glass, which is going to be huge. Uh, Sejuani can peel, Silas can peel as well. And yeah, this Jinx has a lot of tools, for, or team tools there to avoid the death. That being said, if she's ever caught out, she's ever in a bad spot, I don't think her team can save her. So that is going to be really on how Rising Tide play around. That being said, I think the set flank is something that we have to bring up here because if set comes in from a really good angle i think that could really disrupt rising tides game plan 100 percent, because renata is like a straight ultimate like it doesn't like go behind her so if set like just gets behind renata renata can't really do anything mm -hmm. and once set presses are on like jinx or renata and like puts them into his team it's like kind of game over for rising tide so right. it'd be like yeah because you have i you have those three like Cruiser champions, tank champions, Autolips and Leah are really in front, so you don't have to worry about like insta dying to Rising Tide. Um, so Set can like easily just like walk around, get that ult on Jinx, and just insta kill her. So it's like they have to watch out for that as well. So it's all depending on positioning and vision this game, in my opinion. All right, 
You got about 30 seconds here, Tytom. Who do you think the onus is to get the lead? And then we'll wrap it up from there. Who's going to get the lead? I think. No, who do you think the onus is to get the lead? I did not understand. Who who needs to get the lead? Oh, or who, who wants to, to have the lead? Who Raging wants Tide. to have Raging the lead? Tide definitely wants to win this game. But Nameless is going to get it. My <laughs> top rat there. All right, there you go. That's the final opinions on this game. We're going to send it to a break for the spectator delay. And with that, we're going to have our first game. I believe this is our first official game with Nameless Entropy here. And this is going to be week one in the Victorious Amateur Series. Don't go anywhere. First game coming up real soon. See you then.
Okay. All right, everyone. Here we go. We have the game Nameless Entropy on the red side. Rising Tide on blue. It looks like they're going to be going for a level one invade. They're going to pause for now. And we are in this game, Ty Tom. Finally here. Finally, yeah. Um, it seems I see a knight from set in top it, so I think he's confident in this matchup and looking solo kill. All right, they have the invade. Sivir spots it out, throws that boomerang, and they won't get in too far. They'll get a ward, and it looks like Marit is going to be placing a counter ward. That is good. Perfect. And so that means both teams kind of know where the starts are going to be. Minions have spawned. All right, now that does beg the question: What do you think these jungle pathings should be? Uh, they're most likely both just going to be from top to bot. Red side, red to blue for Lilia, blue to red for Sejuani. All right, both teams just want to affect that bot lane right away. 100%. I mean, on, the thing is, Mar on this Lilia doesn't have as effective ganks. Now, the counter gank is just as good because of Lilia's superior damage. Oh, is that War taking some early poke? Don't think there's going to be a death. The Boomerang comes out, but it's been mostly shielded. And it looks like some heavy trading. That's definitely going to bring some attention. Ooh, hook. Just moved on to Renata. Um, the early trade shouldn't be coming out from Nautilus because Renata and Jinx's level 1 is better than Sever and Nautilus level 1. They have a lot more damage, and that Renata passive is also going to hurt a lot. Alright, that's certainly going to be the case. As we just have more heavy trading. Junglers getting pretty close. Sejuani looks like going for a full clear. I think that might be a bit questionable. In that case, Mart is going to get there first. Go defend. And AFK Bowler slugging it out. Zetwar lands a hook. As we have a first blood. We just caught the end glimpse of that. Silas picks up the first kill. Gerbs here into healthy ego. And both teams are starting to fire on all cylinders right from the get-go. A lot of fighting. Top lanes already have HP from both top laners just been duels everywhere yep unfortunately this is where play-by-play -play tends to shine and color takes the sidelines here mid lane we have a gank already and silas can proc the passive from sejuani and that's two kills going down extremely early my scoreboard is a bit glitched so i do want to shout out to everyone just in case as we uh, have ourselves two kills at three minutes this is a pretty hefty lead already for rising tide yeah, and I think that kind of just ruined Irelia's lane because looking at her wave state right now, it's pushing into Silas. If Silas can just hold this wave at his tower and make it really lose and she doesn't have TP, so... Alright, and that gank is just going to be gonna be shut down by Renata. And Misery's here. Alright, it's kind of a bad position for Misery right now. Is that we're going to land the hook? He gets it. The damage is going to go down, but now, Cadence, are you in trouble? We'll see another snare land by Big D. That's going to be very good. Overrush dodges the overhead. Is the red buff going to tick down? Looks like that's going to be the case. Big B going to try to use the passive. Ooh. And they pick up all the kills in the bot lane. Absolute disaster for Rising Tide. And honestly, Nameless, you were in an extremely bad situation. And that was a clutch play. That really needed to go your way. And that's just three kills in the bot side. And Marit going to be extremely ahead of Misery here. Exactly. Yeah, that Lilia counter gank, just like you said, is really strong because of her damage. She took out um, Misery's like. It, yeah, she must have done like seventy percent HP bar of everyone in yeah. that fight. <laughs> that, that true damage is insane in the early game, and that red buff and passive damage is just like whittling down on that Jinx on the Sejuani and the Renata. It's just really strong. And yeah, I think the problem was Misery's positioning there. Didn't realize that. Uh, Mar was going to be in that position, and eventually, what they ended up in having multiple three verses. Oh, here we go, another gank, the pullback, and this is just a three-man gank at four minutes in. Well, that is, let's just be honest, that is tilt worthy. That is tilt worthy. tilt worthy. They're just putting this <laughs> really extremely behind and getting that Silas lead early, and they're probably just going to look for Silas from this game, honestly, because having Silas ahead this early, he gets to push it away for free and roam as much as he wants. Oh, Overrush, that's a little bit uh, over uh, standing there with taking that hook and then trying to trade into it as well. Not a good idea. Yeah, now she's at 
25% HP and has to stay back. Yeah, she's gonna heal up just a little bit though. No potions beyond the last one there. Go defend. This isn't gonna do much into the shield of Mordekaiser here. Yep. And the top those are just gonna be who gets to burst stuff or more. And I think level six. It's also gonna be a very misery is looking for a uh, lane gank here. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna be going for it. Uh, Dragon is up right now. Merit can easily just start this because Misery is tough. And I think he might look for this right now because he yeah, never does. This have lane gank is a bit over ambitious, but looks like Go Defend is gonna fall for it. Does use the shield, survives for now, has the ultimate, uses it, oh gets the God. counter kill. That is definitely not worth for the side of Rising Tide. And again, as you said, that's definitely going to give up the dragon. Even though their mid is heavily, heavily winning, has extreme prio, they're going to be losing this dragon. Bottom has the push as well. So this is definitely going to be a first dragon for Nameless Entropy here. And with the Ignite, just makes it look easy because it is. <laughs> uh, Silas picks up another kill. I mean, Healthy Ego enough. doesn't have Ignite either in this matchup as well. Trying to utilize a TP. First dragon. I mean, Mart has a full clear jungle as well, so this is a very efficient dragon. And yeah, yeah. so far, the bot side of Nameless Entropy doing really good. And then Go Defend on the top side, taking that aggro and then turns it into a winning situation. So it looks like they have one fire, but everywhere else is pretty stable. And it's just the complete opposite for the side of Rising Tide. And I think these dragons for Nameless is really good because Sivir is almost always going to have that push against Jinx. So oh, this is a very, very good 1v1 from Go Defend. And he gets the kill. I mean, he dodged some key uh, spells there from the side of Mordekaiser, Healthy Ego. Gonna go for an all in, but uh, you're not even level 6. That's a 2 level lead. Gerbs picks up another kill. This is, uh, this is a bit of an int. This is a yeah. bit of an int. Hopefully, Healthy Ego has a great ego right now. He's got the mental. His team's winning. You just got to stop the bleeding in mid, and your team will succeed. Uh, you know, two winning lanes on the side lanes, not winning the mid lane. Kind of awkward situation, but you got to take it. Yeah, and I think in this losing matchup, you just have to give up all that minions. You can't walk up the minions. And in order to restore your wave state, you need to have jungle and maybe even support as well coming up. Because I do think Silas can just 2v1 Irelia. And I'm Lilia. worried Silas might be able to 3v1. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. With Lilia ult, I do think he just like burst one person down. It's like... 8 minutes in, he has his mythic. I think for healthy ego, all you gotta do is make sure that Silas stays in lane. Honestly, you're at the point where now you just gotta go the boss strategy, the boss strategy, where you just keep them in lane. You're not worth any gold. Just keep them in lane, keep farming as best as you can. And who cares if they kill you a thousand times? As long as Silas doesn't affect the side lanes, I think you're you're gonna win this game. Mm -hmm. I oh, here we go. Marit gonna have a gank into the stun. Gonna flash forward a bit preemptively, but it is gonna guarantee the kill here. I now question if they go for Rift Herald. Nautilus is gonna be roaming up. They're gonna be giving up plates on bottom side as that's happening, but this might just be Rift Herald. And I so far, Silas has been contained in the mid lane. He has not roamed once yet, and I think this Rift Herald is really good. You can put a top side and get set mm -hmm. ahead out of lane really quickly, and the quicker you get set out of lane, the quicker you get him to roam. He has those protectors much quicker than Mordekaiser here. All right, looks like they're gonna go for a fight here. This is a 3v2 on the top side. Jinx Rocket gonna miss. And Bigby is key. Okay, just hits level six. Can't affect the fight now. And it looks like Nameless have position. Gerbs, he's, he's went over the wall a bit ambitious here. It is and a 4v4. This four. Might it's reset. a 5v4. Yeah, they're gonna have to pull out. Sivir's not here. The best they can go for is a cheeky steal, but yeah, just get the pushes in the lanes. They have to give it up. Because of the back timing from Cadence that we saw earlier, they had to they had to send Sivir to pick up the wave. And that means they lose their Rift Herald there. Oh, yeah, Healthy Ego. This is going to start up a fight. Mars going to land at the, the bowling ball, but is this going to result in the kill? Gerbs is taking a lot of damage, and eventually he does get Zetwar. The Nas is going to go down. Healthy Ego exhausted. Now Marit is going to be giving over a kill. And that, that beautiful lead that they had in the side lanes. It has now just been absorbed by Gerbs, who did, in fact, 3v1. <laughs> As you said, I, the Silas is getting 
really to a point where I don't think he's controllable, and he's just gonna get that two item power spike really quickly. He's probably gonna go like, honestly, I don't know. He can go anything right now and just still win the game. You know, he should have gotten uh, the ring for getting all these stacks. Unfortunately, oh, yeah, he doesn't Dark have Seal. that. Yeah, Dark Seal would have been very preferable and probably would have had, I don't know, fourteen mages already, maybe. <laughs> Actually, more like but... 10. More like 10, but yeah. Close enough. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the server is getting solo plays down here and has a TS lead against Jinx. So I don't think that losing that Rift was too bad for Sivir. Because Sivir mm -hmm. is like, you don't really want to fight with her early. I do think she just wants to farm and get that gold for item. Getting that yeah, Kraken Slayer. Did that she PT get three especially. plates? She got three, three plates. Three plates is definitely worth it. I know, 100%. definitely got two, but three is 100% worth it. As, oh no, Help Ego me. here. And they even have Big B for backup, totally not needed. As Gerbs picks up another kill. And look, uh, it's not looking good mid laning here. I mean, look, yeah. even in farms, you gotta give credit where credit's due. You're keeping it up in farm. But I, the gold difference with kills, it's 2k, 2.2k for Gerbs right. here. Cadence picks up another plate, but is this at the cost of your own life? Gerbs is here, has the Lilia ultimate. Interested to see how that's gonna work out. Ziver spell shields, the knock up, but that may not be the case for Zetwar, who has to walk out of there. Drowsy gonna be popped, and that's just enough counter Drowsy, but I don't think there's a play to be had here. Mart goes for it anyway. I think that was a mistake as they gives up life. another kill. Jinx gonna get a speed up, and now they have four members bottom for an easy turret take. Defend opting in for another 1v1 versus Mordekaiser. And Healthy Ego picking up for a mid lane. Yeah, this is definitely definitely yeah. a bit of overplaying from both teams here. And it's like Nameless are going to be paying for it mostly. 100%. And they get this free dragon here because there's no one here to contest it. And yeah, no lanes are particularly looking strong anymore. Like bot lane and jungle was pretty ahead early game. But now that fight mid lane at, at Herald and now this fight bot lane because brings that all back to Rising Tide. And that's exactly oh. what... They want to get oh, healthy there. ego! Healthy oh. ego picks up the thousand gold bounty. You know what? You get uh -huh. the kill, definitely worth it. But now that resets your own value as well. Yeah. So maybe Gerbs uh, in the end might pick up more money. We will have to see. Still hasn't picked up the dark seal. I guess it's a good thing. Would have lost it right there. As healthy ego, I mean, look, that's just worth it. That pretty much half the gold lead in mid lane was cut via that bounty there. So that is a good thing. Does pick uh, up the Blade of the Rune King as well. And yeah, what's on your mind, Tai Tom? Um, this is exactly what Rising Tide want. They wanted to get that early lead ahead, and it wasn't bot lane that got ahead. It got was mid lane that got ahead. And once they saw Solid Solo killing, and then that I rally a TP in mid lane, and then Misery, right there at the perfect time, he sees the TP. I'm going to gank. I really doesn't have flash. I get a free gank, free kill. I really doesn't have TP anymore, and Blade is ruined for her. Alright, Gerbs. Going for another kill. He's barely lost any HP as Healthy Ego goes down yet again. Alright, looks like the top lane, they're gonna go for the kill. Double knockups. Unfortunately, the way that stacked isn't gonna get full effectiveness. 1v1 between Zetwar and AFK Boulder. Exhaust goes out to save his life. Looks like they're gonna pick up the kill there. It's Cadence is going to try to avoid the dive. Bottom lane, Gerbs picking up the blue buff. And, you know, I think the strategy for Nameless has to be make a play on the side of the map that Gerbs is not there, and then run away when he comes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's perfectly what they're doing, again. Trying to get that those small leads. Oh, Caden's going to go low. Spell Shield doesn't block auto attacks. Should have uh, read the patch notes on that one. <laughs> As we yeah. have a death going over. I mean, you said Sivir's supposed to be able to hold that lane. But can you hold it against a 2, 1, and 3, now 3, 1, and 3 Jinx? Yeah, I think that Rift Herald fight kind of scuffed Sivir a little bit in this lane. I think she just has to give a farm. And what, this tower is gone now, so her lane phase down here, if she decides to go bot again, is going to be a bit freer just because she has this tier 2 protecting her. And she's not as far up as she would be if there was a tier 1. And it's really hard to dive her because of her base being so close. But... Right now, I think she just goes mid lane like she is right now, and getting that mid lane in. Um, yeah. I'm you know, really I surprised. do have to wonder. 
Could they put set mid lane against the Silas? Because that is not a good matchup for the Silas. All right, Hook going to land on Big B. And looks like he's going to try to delay this as much as possible. Ultimate coming out. Zetwar. It might have been a bait, though. And I think that is the first Renata ultimate we yep. see. And minimal effectiveness there. But yeah, could they have switched set into mid lane here? Here's the problem, right? Silas is 11 and 1 and about to compete at Death Cap. So. <laughs> I a little too late. <laughs> yeah, a little bit too Maybe late. Maybe they should have done it at like two deaths. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I do think a lane swap, like once like I really lost that TP, I think we can swap. Or maybe they should have just done it from the get-go, because that is a good matchup. It is, yes. I do think. But like, I think Mordekaiser wins um, trades against Irela just because of the shield. Um, that is the case here. Big B, bit of an interesting scenario here. Trying to save that ward. Does not do so. Rift Herald's up here. Gerbs is coming in mid lane. Nameless, all ye must run from the death of Silas. We'd be gonna land that snare, very important. Flash gonna go out to dodge the chains. Gerbs is gonna be able to use set ultimate to get that kill. Marit was caught in a bad position, but does get the ultimate. And now we have multiple low health members and an alive oh Sivir. This may be the turning point. Healthy Ego picks up the kill. Gerbs is still alive. Go defend, tries to get the kill. Healthy Ego in the 1v1 versus the boulder that is we not playing the game. And it looks like now he's got to run away. He uses the flash to get out of there. Nameless, uh, they trade one for one. Considering the game state, that is a win. That is a big win. That four-man sleep from Lilia really turned the tides of the fight there. I think they have to consider the possibility of getting Grievous Wounds to kill Gerbs here. Oh, tries the flash for it. And that's another kill over to Gerbs. Oh, the pain. The pain. I saw the angle, but... Gerbs did play well, he dodged the stun, which lets Irelia not being able to get that kill on him. And... Yeah, I think for Irelia in that scenario, you have to bait out the dashes. So auto attack, make them feel a little pressure to dodge with the dash, and then basically catch them afterwards here. 100%. Unfortunately, Ego just kind of went for the predict, doesn't get it. They might pick up Rift Herald. This is the yeah. lower value one, and they're it trading the for a dragon. Ultra Honestly, Dragon you have to trade, right? Yeah, Type I don't think you can attach right now for Nameless. You have to go on the opposite of the map whenever you take the test because right now, you have to get that lucky team with that four men, and Julia does not have it, so I think it's definitely lost by if they try to do 5v5. Alright, Gerb and... might be hunting for another kill here. Picks up the Lily ultimate. Honestly, not too bad for the Silas. We're seeing how it played out the last few times. Silas finished that cap. He is a really strong full EP Silas. Yeah, he's going the assassin build. Uh, I think the meta these days you kind of go full bruiser with banshees and the zonias, and then you just become unkillable. And he 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 didn't go Ionia, so he's definitely yeah. not going the bruiser build. Just gonna go full on one shot. Full on I kill everyone yeah. build. And, and look, he's thirteen one and three, so fair enough. I, I don't. don't I'm not criticizing it. Yeah. <laughs> Right now, Sivir and Jinx looks very similar on items. Um, whoever gets to that IE first, I think, will determine the game, honestly. Even with the Silas being 13 and 1, like, we saw, like, Oh, healthy. healthy Ego. Gonna go for the dive? Looks like he's gonna. Look, oh. he's willing to make these plays to get back in the game. And, yeah, that Mordekaiser matchup looks a lot more tenable for the Irelia. Might be giving up his life for that kill. As we have I did not see that. Oh, pops the ultimate. This is a three versus one here. Yep, definitely no chance in hell you win that one. Team isn't going to pick up much on the map either. I feel like once you know that your Irelia is caught out, you got to push. Like, you and you have a Sivir, so you can push really fast too. Yeah, that top turret should have gone down instantaneously once they saw that roam happen. Because getting these tier ones down for Nameless allows them to unlock the map. And I think that's what they really need to do right now. Because... Not having vision in the enemy jungle right now makes it really hard to take any objective or try to make any plays because you don't see anybody. So what yeah. they're doing right now is perfect. I was getting that deep vision and you got that top here and they're pushing me to tier two as well. Oh, lands the hook. Zetwar picks it up. Boomerang gonna follow as well. Uses the ultimate. Is gonna fall asleep. Rift is gonna crash into this turret. Multiple members are making their way to stop this advance though. MK Boulder is gonna get out. Granada ultimate. Is gonna just find one again, not too effective use yeah. of the Renat ultimate. 
Healthy Ego. Okay, he's going for it here. Is he going to land the stun? No, does not. He's going to use the this the damage block for that knock up there. Now he's super low. Ultimate Ooh. Gerbs just picks it up, blasts it in Irelia's face. And fun fact, that has a very high AP ratio. It does. And I think that Ignite that we were talking about at the beginning, instead of TP, would have definitely determined that matchup because Silas did heal for like 400 HP there because of his AP ratios. So that Ignite definitely would have won Healthy Eagle to fight. And I'm very surprised that the fights are this close for Healthy Eagle versus Gerbs. Well, we Gerbs does one. not have any tank Ad stats, mod. right? Yeah, so he can be bursted out. It is definitely Great. not outside of that window there. Unfortunately, though, he just bursts better than Healthy Ego. <laughs> well, yeah, given that he has a rabbit on and Everfrost. <laughs> um, right now, I do think they should be positioned around this top side uh, for Nameless because I'm getting that Baron set up because I do think yes. uh, Rising Tide have that like threat because of how ahead they are. And Sejuani being like a Giga tank to that Baron, like they can easily just start the Baron. Oh, uh, is Healthy Ego dead here? Oh gonna God. try to go for the 1v1. Can he get AFK Boulder before he dies? Could be worth it. Does pick that up. And now the rest of the squad are Man. here. Look, I'll give credit to the Ego. He's finding some plays. Look, that's kill. well worth it. Yeah, and look at Mary and go defend right now. They're going bot lane exactly like you said before. Making plays on the opposite side of the map. If yeah. I was uh, Rising Tide here, I could have just snuck a Baron. Well, I it guess. would more be like a Baron trade than sneaking, but I agree with that. Looks like they're gonna just trade turrets for now. And yeah, I think the Baron trade would have been... I mean, it doesn't really look that good right now. Nice. As they're going for that inhib. And Silver Nautilus are gonna back to prevent that from getting any worse on their side. And for now, oh, it's just an even turret trade. Oh no. Healthy Ego has TP. Do they look for the play topside? I do not think it's for it because now that... Go for it. Oh, oh, is that a flash? Into, that yeah, that right was a flash. Right, tried to go over, did not land it. And, and now they have a very questionable uh, problem at this dragon. Yeah, they are not set up at this dragon with their Silver Nautilus, so Rising Tide can just easily set up with Vision. And they can't really, they must can't really do anything. Um, right, go defend, doesn't have TP, has to walk up. Mid lane is pushed in, and they do not have first purchase on this dragon. Rising Tide are in a bush and they're just yeah, trying much. to bait in kill here there's not much vision they're not on dragon so entropy doesn't have to walk in but that's entropy a very knows good pick ward. That controller yeah that was a good just threw the dragon over the wall yeah she because... can definitely do that but now she's in a vulnerable position if the enemy team decides to come healthy ego lands a pretty good ultimate is going to go in solo the renata alt is going to do a lot of disruption in the back line Gerbs, he's being CC. Can he survive? He does not have a Zonias. He goes down. And now it's AFK Boulder in the Dragon Pit all on his lonesome Marit there. I don't think he's going to be able to get anything. Go defend. Has to survive. Doesn't want to give over a kill to Jinx. And eventually he does. And that leads into the kill to Zetwar as well. Can Caden stop this? They do get the Dragon. And then that's going to be another Overrush. kill. And now Overrush picks up another one. Now it's on Healthy Ego. Doesn't get the stun on Jinx. And has just to auto attack it out, oh and she wins that. Yeah, that's what we talked about at the beginning. Give you the Jinxie's kills, these resets, and it just activates her really fast. And with that rapid fire, she is just getting these picks off with her rocket and getting that move speed towards target. And with that excited state, she just runs at them and kills them like it just happened. That was an unofficial Benta if Misery didn't take those two kills, by the way. Or I think, oh, they're gonna go trade this over right into the Baron. And everyone from the side Nameless is still dead. And I have to say, yeah, that just led to a series of kills that most champions would not be able to get. Jinx does profit from that scenario. Just picks up the kills one after another. Yeah. Otherwise, they definitely would have won that from the side of Nameless. I mean, they killed Gerbs. He did not have Zonius. Now he does. So no, that's going to be way more difficult. And they lost the dragon. So... Nameless had a good scenario, unfortunately. Uh, a little but bit anti-clutch, is what yeah, they call it now. Went up too far, looking to get that W one shot in the Haymaker. But yeah, he, he should have backed off way earlier. And then the, the butterfly in. effect. Yeah, the butterfly effect would have happened, and none of all none of all that bad stuff probably wouldn't have occurred. <laughs> and I think after that dragon fight, they could just set up vision around Baron, and yeah. probably even have a really good time to do it.
but yeah Titan, are easy. you a bit surprised that the gold lead is as small as it is? I am extremely surprised that it's not like 8k to 10k right now. It is only 5k ish, 4.5. Yeah. But yeah, I'm very surprised. Seven. Oh, Jake says IE now, so that's really. All right, and it looks like Nameless is also having someone to pick on in this game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> AFK Boulder, unfortunately, isn't the rock for his team. It was out there another kill, but yeah, both teams finding someone to bully in this game. That's always good to have because having only one person on your team getting bullied feels really bad. But being able to bully somebody else. Oh, well, LD Ego in another 1v1. Murder Sonia is in play now. We'll see how they play it out. LD Ego does drop. Doesn't even look close as the mid and hip is going down. Mart on the side does not get a very good bowling ball here. Big B gonna burn the ultimate. In defense of his own life, the hook Ooh. lands Zetwar. This might be the turnaround. Ultimate can be blown from Cadence. Are they going to pick up the kill? Looks like that's a going to be an inevitability. Marit does get the ultimate, but does go down in the process. And Big B gets the reset, but dies yet again. Jinx certainly can pick up the kill. Never mind. Gerbs is going to find it on the other side. Bit of a whip pan here. Go defend was not even at that at base the whole time. Trying to get, pick up a win against AFK Boulder on the side lane. And they're looking to end here because it is a good angle. Nobody is alive right now. Healthy Ego is up, but I do not think he can solo defend this. And if this turret goes down, they can't win the fight anyway. Go defend. Just going to run right in. Gonna land the stun. And they're on multiple members. This is not coordinated. Is that going to give them the win, though? Healthy Ego does go down. Gerbs and Overrush are going Overrush. to be alive. And that just might be the game. Overrush is pretty low, though. Jinx going they're for the end, and there Gerb's defending. And that's good. Wow. That is not what I expected. Yeah, Were you expecting this the score line to be as it is for the side of Nameless? Definitely not. I did not expect uh, Healthy Ego to go down this far in goal. I would have expected him to go even, honestly. Or he, like, if he went down, he would have been not as much as he was right now. And I think that just turned the ties of the game into Bryce's head's favor. Look, I think we got to call out a mistake when we see it, Ty Tom. And there was a, a, a key piece to this puzzle. That is the draft. Was Irelia R3 a good idea? Definitely not. Like we said, we need that enchanter. <laughs> that enchanter pick? Because now you have Lulu and Yumi banned out instantly from Rising Tide. Because they know, Sivir will put enchanter, unstoppable. And once those are banned out, what are you really going to do? You don't really have any other buffers. He has Karma and Janna maybe, but even then, those aren't as effective as Lulu, Yumi. And I do think Kaden could have done a lot better. I think he could have rotated with the team more instead of going bot lane wave. I think I don't needed... really blame Kaden. I think that's a yeah. team decision, Titan. Do you have well, to agree is... with that? I do think the ADC, because Jinx overrushed it, he had a lot of kills. Um, from that Rift Herald, like a lot of gold, she mm, that's true. she got a lot, had a lot more Kaden, which kind of turned the tides of the ADC matchup. It Jinx a lot more stronger, and Kaden was also going LDR third, too, which is which is kind of forced. I don't blame him for having to go that because of Sejuani, Mordekaiser, and Silas. So that kind of just like he's not gonna get that IE's power spike with not being at all right. Six. Yeah. So we, we've identified some issues from Nameless Esports. On the other side, I mean, it looks like Rising Tide did do pretty well. To be fair, 16 and 2. Silas, pretty big. Surprising, though, Healthy Ego ended up being the most damaged for his team. So we can see, as you said, how much of a powerhouse Healthy Ego is for his team, even though was with this horrible scoreline, ended up doing the most damage for his team. So, you know, honestly, I think that I mean, obviously the the laning wasn't so good, but we can see in the fights how well he healthy ego is playing these games. As we're gonna just round out the that is just gonna be our end of analysis for game one. We're gonna prepare prepare game two for you in just a moment. In the meantime, we're sending it to break. See you then.
you don't have to do work for yourself. All right. Are we ready? I am ready. Okay. Just tell us when you're ready to go, and we'll start it up. Looks like they're starting. They've started. They have started to drop ready to. Yeah, just queue us in for live. Oh. All right. Hello, everyone. Okay, a little bit of shenanigans here as we have ourselves game number two. If you missed game number one, Rising Tide did pick up the win there with dominant play by Gerbs in the mid lane. Looks like even though they smashed Irelia in the mid lane, they don't want to go for round two as we have Nameless Entropy picking up the Diana Band yet again. And while the bands are going, Ty Tom. Let's talk about adjustment in draft, especially considering game one. Um, yeah, last draft, like you said, that R3 pick was a little bit troll because not picking up Yumi or Lulu, especially Yumi, at that scenario when she wasn't banned, was a big mistake for Nameless, and that didn't let Sivir get mm -hmm. what she kind of wanted. And giving Healthy Ego like a blind pick mid laner, even though like he didn't do as well in lane, but like still like did decently side lanes, trading one for one a lot of the time. I do think giving Healthy Eco these counter matchup R5 picks would be really nice because of his shape pool, and picking those supports with Sivir that go really well with Sivir is priority for Nameless. Yeah, I think that is definitely what they should have done. You know, a bit of unfortunate that Nameless Entropy do not play the Poppy, because I think this is a very, very good use oh. of the Poppy, very good position. They're going to go for Volbear instead. A little more early game. Definitely not a farm centric jungler here, Ty Tom. Yeah, this is more of a run at a lane level two, level three, and try and get that lane ahead because Volibear ganks are really easy to and Sivir pick. Pretty much a guaranteed kill with Flash, 100%. as it should be. Sivir gonna be picked up here. All right. Zeri's open, so they could go for Zeri Yumi, get the Yumi themselves. But Jinx Lulu plays open. well into Yumi. We'll see what Rising Tide go with. And Renata is banned now, so they don't really have that counter um, gauge support unless they pick Kari. Okay. They're going to go Jinx yet again. Overrush really favoring that pick here. He did really well in the last game, and I trust his confidence in this game as well. Um, now, th I think the big question is who's the support going to be? Because that's probably going to dictate the lane. I do think it's going to be a never -ending. And then Sever is going to match that enchanted. Or nameless. As well. Hopefully they do. Now, they do have oh. red side yet again. So we'll see if they get their support oh, counterpick. The They're going to go with the Brom. And this basically means Orn is heavily disincentivized. And Orn. an engaged champion they can play now is Rakan. I wonder if they go for it. Rakan is the very famous counter to Brom here. I think he picked up uh, Yumi here, if I'm 100% honest. I, think I mean, they could like, go either or, depending yeah. on what kind of comp they want to set up here. They're going to go awesome. for Morgana instead. Uh, flex pick, but considering Volibear is here, I don't think that is going to be flexed yeah. around. Looks like Nameless really hate playing Yumi and Lulu so far. <laughs> I think if you're going to pick Sivir, your support should really like them. Because Morgana, I'm going to be 100% honest, I don't like the editor. Do not think. I think there are a lot of uh, better support that can be picked. Like I think uh, I I I would say considering who's being who's on the draft right now, Morgana is not very ideal. I agree with you as well. I mean, it's really good in a Poppy. Poppy's not really here. Yeah. Among and Amumu, but again, Amumu's not here. So Morgana, yeah, kind of a bit questionable pick, and doubles up on the spell shielding capabilities here. As Sivir already has that, as they are taking out Set, so they didn't like go defend Set either. I wouldn't like it either if I was. 
yeah, Bold did win the 1v1 a couple times against Boulder there as we have Gnar being taken out. Very good team fighting top laner. That is Boulder's most played top lane, so I wouldn't doubt they ban him. Gnar is a really, I think he's Zeta tier right now in a lot of tier lists, top lane. Wait. Oh, okay. Is I don't know if Gnar is game breaking. I'm just going to be real. As they pick up Silas first this time around. Silas, good blind pick, which kind of, you know, depending on what our uh, Rising Tide go for, could still counter it. Like, Azir actually, I think, plays very well into Silas. Just basically gets free poke all laning phase. We'll see if they go for that. I think, yeah. again, we're, we're going to throw a bit of a question mark ping. Why aren't they saving the counter for Healthy Ego? I do think, yeah, like I said, that champ, his shampoo is perfect counter picking. And if he gets ahead, like with the way he plays, even like going four and fifteen like was last game, he still managed mm -hmm. one one. So imagine what he would be like if he had like fifteen kills instead. Like I think that counter. Oh my. Oh well, that is you know, uh, I think this is a interesting scenario. Maybe they are flexing the Silas. It might be a hidden flex. We're gonna it see Heimerdinger gonna be picked up here from the side of Rising Tide, and now their comp has been filled out. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Ooh. As, oh, do we get a Mordekaiser into Aatrox? Looks like that's going to be the case. Okay, so now here's my problem. This was the same problem Rising Tide had last game, where they had four AP threats and threat with EDC. So mm -hmm. I think Nameless has to be really careful. Like, they have this comp that they can easily get ahead with, but if right. they don't let Sever get fully ahead, or more ahead than Jinx, it's going to be a real problem because they have Sejuani, Aatrox, and Braum. It's going to be really tough to get through that front line, especially with the amount of healing Aatrox has. Braum shield, Sejuani just being a giga tank like he is. Like, it's going to be really hard to get through them if they just stack MR and Sivir is not doing as much damage. And I think Sivir needs to get those items. He needs to get that Kraken uh, PDIE and get to LDR as soon as possible because the tankier they get, the harder it is to kill them work and to get ahead so that's my problem they had the same problem right so but rising tide did end up winning and jinx did get really ahead so we'll have to see if nina tried to do the same thing up here. yeah and it's really looking like with the comp they have set up here again they've positioned overrush in a in a in a place of protection, yes. there's a lot of ways for Jinx to be killed here. And with the Heimerdinger, you know, it's you got a question. Do we want to engage right now on this uh, turret line? Yeah. And that might be your doom. Volibear can only go in. Silas can only go in. Mordekaiser can only go in. Now, again, they have the same Sivir synergy where they can run in together really quickly, pick up some kills. Yep. Question is... Do they want to, though? Because that would be playing in right into the hands of Jinx, Braum, Heimerdinger. 100%. Like, running into Heimerdinger is not something you really want to do. Because those turrets, those um, R turrets, that's a lot of damage per second happening to Heimerdinger. And then you have Jinx learning on damage, Aatrox learning on damage, so Johnny Braum learning on CC. It's how are you supposed to play into that? Heimerdinger is just an amazing pick here. Even though that champion is really meta, per se, into this type of wants to run in that's exactly why and perfect pick for rising tide all right so i think now we have right. to start identifying the fight, you lane win. matchups that can be abused by both teams do you have an idea of which one you think is the most vulnerable in mind uh vulnerable it has to be top lane bot lane you have sliver morgana double smoke shield really hard to gank because you can't really get your cc onto them and they should be able to get a lot of push down as well that is so well, they have yes. super prio yeah. Uh, mid lane, it's going to be really hard to gank Heimerdinger from Nameless because Heimerdinger is just a champion that loves getting ganked because he can just like run away from with his turrets. He can has his stun. It's really hard to gank. So the most vulnerable would be top lane because they don't really have that much of an escape from Aatrox or Mordekaiser. So, and with both these, any of these champions getting fed, they are hyper carry top lane users. So to be just oh, can I get this Aatrox ahead and have him heal permanently and never die? Can I get this Mordekaiser ahead and have him do 80% of the ADC health bar of one by it? Like, that's what I think I want to see from both teams. 
um, that focus on top lane because bot lane is self sufficient. Mid lane is really hard to gank, and I think it's it's in mid lane is a rising tide favor, and I think top lane is like heavily dependent on who is gonna get that perfect wave set up for their jungle. All right, let's snowball this. Who's gonna pick up the very first objective? You know, either that very coveted Rift Herald or that Dragon now. I think, like last game, I think it would be in favor of Nameless because they have, Sivir's early clear is a lot better than Jin Jinku's early clear. And mm -hmm. Morgana as well, that like, um, the Morgana W on yeah. helping Jin Sivir push it. With Volibear like, early game. Yeah, there's just no way around it. Volibear is amazing at taking objectives as percent. Health damage on multiple abilities and is very tanky and has the shielding as well those are all tools very effective for taking down objectives and yeah they can just move around that saver morgana get the prio get the objectives we'll see if that's what they're gonna go for on the side of nameless as we have game number two and if nameless want to win this series they're gonna have to pick up a win right here and don't go too far that break just gonna be a quick three minutes before we get a very pivotal match in this series See you then.
All right. For everyone who has short-term memory loss, this is the Victorious Amateur Series. Week one, a game between Rising Tide and Nameless Entropy. As that war is just chilling in base. Don't recommend that. As we have ourselves an invade. Go defend! He's gonna find himself a bit of a knock up here. The Brom Q is gonna land the one of the best abilities in the game. Early game stun comes out. Flash gonna be burned. As oh, that's a DC. Okay, they did pause for it. I was gonna question that. I think they should have done that earlier. Probably, but it wouldn't have affected the game because they went for the five point start. So they would have been fine. They covered it with a ward, so I guess they're gonna. <laughs> they used the ward to cover their AFK player. I guess that makes sense. <laughs> That's All right, but I mean, look, that might be changing up the game here because Go Defend has lost himself Flash in a yeah. as, as well as Boulder, Boulder, which I actually am now questioning. But now you said that's the most abusable lane right now. Very. And both top laners do not have flash, and so one does not even have TP. Oh, Boulder's the one that's taking it this time, so. A summoner has wow, I think now it's just both junglers go top and get that, abuse that flash. Right. Gun. Uh, don't always recommend this, but I think this is a level two cheese top gank. What do you think? Ooh. It could be, yeah. Mordekaiser does not flash, he does not have any mobility. I mean, um, either I one. Either one. Uh, I think Mordekaiser Sejuani did can do it. E. Volibear can do it. Vol I think Volibear is better than Sejuani just because more guaranteed. Oh, you know, I oh they're they're wasting time honestly. Um, they are. If they oh, oh a little, yeah, I think this is just do the pause. It'll undo eventually. As we have a ward on red for the side of nameless entropy. Yeah, uh, does this all the time after. Yeah, I'm sure that for chat and viewers here, uh, this will eventually unpause. And there it is. Yeah, that's just right. Spaghetti code. But as as you're saying, Ty Tom. Um. Yeah, I was gonna say Volibear has a more guaranteed um, gank onto Aatrox because his is point and click stun. So Giovanni, you have to aim. And the thing is, Mordekaiser did start e, so. The way he he just like disengaged Sejuani with an E backwards, so it's I think it's a lot harder for just changing the situation based on the way they started. Um, but Polybear is starting bot. Oh, both junglers are starting bot, so it is just the uh, bot to top tier. Okay, well I would have went full chat energy, and I would have. I mean, I think actually for the side of Rising Tide, they could have split the map, which in a situation where both your top laners are on a flash. I think that's just a free kill, for sure. But they don't opt for that, so no split map for them. As both top laners heavy trading, and Go Defend did not burn the TP, so still has that. Yeah, he did not reset because he could. I don't think he could because of Jinx just abusing Hunter Tower's W. All right, and that's a very favorable trade bot side there. It is very favorable. Yeah, Braum early game right now against the Panthers is really bad because Braum is like the type of guy to be disengaged, but with Enchanters and Mages like Morgana, it's like, I'm getting pumped oh. down, I can't really do anything. And Jinx Over is just rush. getting abused. Oh, just getting, getting all the CCs in the face. Ooh, I don't like this that merit. damage as well. It's looking like they're barring a little bit from this. Oh, here we go. Gank gonna land Gerbs. Really low HP, burns the flash. Unfortunately, healthy ego level 2. Is he going to go down? Does not. I, I don't even know how much HP he had left, but it, it was a sliver. Mari, that's why he did the full clear on his side to go for that. Oh, is he going to land the knockup? Gets stunned in the face. Does get Ooh. the kill off the back end of the Q. The back blast going to get the kill. All right, first blood in the favor of Nameless here. Go defend, though. He's got to sniff a gank because he is in danger. And I don't even know if Misery was required there. Picks up the kill. Yeah. Easy peasy. And now Marit doesn't have a top laner to contest this crab. We'll certainly have to go for bot crab instead. Meanwhile, Cadence and Zetwar are just pushing in. They're just shoving in with Sivir and Morgana as we expected. 
percent. Yeah, and with Hybrid Tinker, that gank mid was a little bit questionable because of the turret setup. Oh, I don't know about this. Healthy Ego taking a lot of damage from minions. They do have Zetwar there. Looks Ooh. like Gerbs does smell the Morgana Roam in the water and avoids death. I think Zetwar could have held the Q for almost flash, an insane so. amount of time. Marit not respecting Heimer mid, and that's just a free what? kill. Marit has a honest. few question mark that's things. An, that's an it. They, like, you don't no, just walk through hybrid. Oh, it was just a red buff transfer. Never mind. As healthy ego. Yeah, see, they just wanted to give oh. red buff to healthy ego here. Ooh. Now he's in a bit of a dangerous situation. The spell shield didn't come out as well. No. What are you doing, healthy ego? No, okay, that's he turns a, around. Ego's eventually. a little bit too big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, as oh. I said, as I said, Titan, they just wanted to give red buff to uh, healthy ego there. As that war, gonna get stunned here. Misery doesn't have anywhere to follow up. And Misery just gets both these crabs, and that just provides a lot of utility to the river. Um, but for bot side here, Merrick can just walk through that darkness right there, and he doesn't have to worry about it. But top side, it's a little bit harder. Yeah, the vision is a lie, folks. Don't believe it. There are gaps. Anyone can walk around them on both sides. Yeah, and there's Don't like... Never believe that vision. It's a total lie. Uh, but the thing, I think the big thing is, Mart has fallen behind Sejuani, Definitely a matchup you don't want to fall behind in as Bella Bear scales terribly. Very, I was, yeah. I was going to use an expletive because that's how bad it is, but yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, he falls off a lot sooner than Sojuani, and Sojuani being the type she is, she just provides that. Like, her utility kit is a lot more reliant than Bella Bear, and later in the game it's just a lot stronger. So yep. Mary does have to be farming and getting these early ganks off, getting his laners ahead because... He can't really self-sustain himself in this into this team. He has oh, to go for a gank though. All right, utilizing that early. Oh, and he lands a knock of healthy ego. Oh, Just gets the kill ego. basically solo. Mara didn't have to do much. Just a little it... moral support there, and it's looking like game one might be reversed on its head. Yeah, status pick is seeming really strong. Oh, game. and this time healthy ego has the dark seal, so can get the magi. Yeah, six stacks already, which is. Really nice to have, but... Oh, Zetwar gonna be using the spell shield. Gonna try to block for Cadence. Actually, very well played out from Zetwar. And very now well. they have the reversal. Marit is here, but uh, it looks like they smell that. And they're going to go ahead and walk away. They sensed it. They Ooh, sensed the killing Eagles intent. <laughs> but I go think... defend. Picks like up a said, nice trade. Volibear is getting this early dragon because... Sorry, can... Oh, ultimate can be burned here. And yeah... Again, it's looking like a flip of game one because Go Defend now on the Mordekaiser is not doing so hot. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe Mordekaiser is a bait pick here. I mean, let's be honest, not very good in the game right now. It does win lane, yeah. but beyond yeah, that, not very much useful champion. And barely wins lane at that, folks. Mm -hmm. Barely wins lane. Yeah, but Healthy Ego now on this pick, doing really well in these early kills, early lead against Heimerdinger. And I hope to see a lot more proactive plays from Healthy Ego that we didn't see from Gerbs last game because Gerbs didn't really leave lane last game and yes. didn't really have much impact so I hope to see Healthy Ego just like roaming bot, getting severe killer to go roaming top and helping out defend a little bit before uh, Aatrox gets too ahead. Like, Yeah, I think the problem is Healthy Ego is never going to get that push on Heimerdinger. Yeah, Heimerdinger like, is a little bit... Uh, he's just never going to get through. So he's going to have to sacrifice CS. I think the smartest thing to do would actually be to set up a rotation from Cadence to pick up the free farm while Healthy Ego makes up a play. Mm -hmm. uh, like, but that might be a little hard to coordinate right now. 100%. That is... I don't expect people to, like... That, like... Maybe Healthy Ego goes top and then Cadence rotates up with it. Mid yeah, and then instead. clears out the wave and yeah. runs back bottom, and then, you know, hopefully you don't get to play. And it's then too hard back. to coordinate, because Sivir gets... Oh, wow, they are rotating top lane and bot lane this game. Alright, uh, I feel like all that's going to do is put AFK Boulder in a losing matchup that he was winning. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what he's supposed to do against double raid. Well, they wanted to trade because they wanted to make the first play on Rift Herald, so if they get this win. clean, shouldn't be a problem. But, I mean, again, I think it's a bit unnecessary. And now, yeah, Boulder's just taking free punishment. And he's going to give up plates. That's the problem. He's going to give up plates. Mm -hmm. Right now, um, Go Defend has the wave pushed in. So, Jinx, we get that. 
plate value, but defend is recalling and the tower plate is only 200 HP from dying out. So I think yeah, that's free gold. All they have to do is pick up two plates here. And they could even get a kill. Boulder's super low. And if he gets queued, he can't really heal off his damage. Mm -hmm. He can't really use. Alright, Rapparel being popped. This is a bit early, but they're gonna go for it. Uh, and. Alright, Cadence takes a little bit of damage, but they do get the two plates. And I think that just ends up being an even trade overall, Titan. I don't think that's very worthwhile. Yeah, and Cadence is just. Like, originally into. Jinx problem. It's like but not. It's still easy for Kaden to farm, but now into Aatrox, who is a melee champion and can't really engage in the Ghana, it's like a lot easier for Kaden to farm up and get his items because he can't get ice punished. And I think that was a little bit of a troll play from Rising Tide, but in the end, they did get Jinx tower plating, but Silver did get, definitely get more gold because. Um, Alright, a little bit of a 2v2 here, Healthy Ego does pick it up, does get the stun, doesn't land on Gerbs though. Mara going in pretty deep, but then decides to turn it around because realizes he's not going to get the kill. Big B is here, Healthy Ego playing on the side. And that just ends up being a wash. Yeah, Mara did use the ultimate there, but I do think if... Here's the problem with the game of right? Those turrets make it a lot harder to play, especially when you have skill shots like Silas. Only, like land it, get like play around the turret. So in order to like have a good gank setup, Silas needs to get those turrets like down. Because Hammerdinger turrets do have like a cool thing. He can't like just instantly place three whenever he wants. He has to wait it out. So the quicker you do that, the better it is for Bellybird to gank and a lot easier. But and that's how I think that play would have gone a lot better if Hammerdinger turret. Oh, spell shield doesn't block the second half of that. Caden takes a massive cue to the face. And then throw the boomerang blade in return. Zetwar lands a very needed snare on the Mogana. Now they're a bit surrounded. Gerbs on the other side and probably has a turret wall to match. Eagle it's going to try to snipe the kill. Oh Ooh. my gosh. Cadence wants to auto award and gives over a kill. Zetwar is here and they, with the combination, Healthy Ego does pick up another kill. They're going to go ahead and land the snare and walk out of this situation. And they have a nice healing fruit for their troubles as well. Gerbs is going to take control of this mid lane. Going to push it in. Yeah, Cadence. Oh, I wonder if that was a misclick on the ward. I think or... that was. <sighs> like, or it could have just been like auto attack being on. I just had to walk like half a Teemo and not die there. <laughs> yeah, that was very unlucky. But they do get the return kill. So it's not too horrible. But... Oh, yeah. Healthy Ego in the face of Gerbs and now is laying on wow. the hurt, picks up the kill, and now is on 10 stacks on the Dark Seals. See what I was saying from game one here? Would have had at least 10 stacks. Now, yes. question Will he go Morello's? Yeah. Will he get the curse or? No, don't go Morello. Why would you go Morello? There's no way. There's no way, right? <laughs> we always say that, but it happens sometimes i but, wonder gonna go zonius is he gonna go the bruiser i think build? it's Zonius. yeah i think you go the bruiser build i think the death cap from gerbs game one it was nice and you did finish it in time but i think the zonius probably would have been better for your team overall yeah especially into like if you're side laning against that really like you saw how Ooh, that's a that's a one. predicting a half from zetwar here gonna trade into overrush doesn't do that much damage take the Actually, very losing trade on the way out. And we have second dragon secured for the side of Nameless as well. That's the really gold good. dead even. It usually never ends up being this even in a game. This is a rare occurrence here. But two dragons to none. Gonna have to give it over to Nameless for the early game so far. Oh, is that one going low? Merit is on the gank. That's probably gonna be a dead Heimer as Overrush is dropping extremely low. Braum does block some of the damage. Mart picks it up. That is not where you want the gold to be going. But they do pick up a kill on the Jinx. Overrush does go down, and they should be able to pick up this turret. As, in fact, Gerbs did die. That Dark Seal isn't going to stack any further. Probably needs to upgrade it soon if he wants to capitalize off that. As we just have plays into plays into plays. Go defend is ulting on Boulder here. Is a level up. Unfortunately, isn't really going to be able to utilize the turret. Baits that in. Tur a turret shot goes down to the Boulder, but he's going to have to flash away. Ignite coming up soon. 
I don't think he flashes there. Boulder does yeah, not I think have that's his... A, I think that is also mistaken. Now, without a flash and a Sejuani coming in from the backside. Okay, that's a bit early. Misery does miss. Does not get the ultimate. Eventually, double pull. Unfortunately, Misery picked up the aggro the whole time. And Boulder does not go down. And yet, a flash would have been nice right there. 100%. Yeah, Boulder did not have his Qs because he just used them. So there was no kill angle on to defend. So all defend had to do there was get hit by the Aatrox chain and then E right after he uh, gets pulled. And that was a free kill because um, Boulder was taking the tower for a little bit there. So it was a lot of damage coming from tower and defend. But because of that, he pays for his, of his life and loses his first tower. They're going to give up another tower from the side of Nameless here. And I see two carries in the mid lane. Looks like they're going to try to over prioritize Rift Herald instead of defending that bot side. Go Defend's going to go. Doesn't have TP. Won't be able to match up with his team, though. So they're probably going to have to get Rift Herald ASAP. And on the mean side, it looks like R Rising Tide isn't even going to think about Rift Herald. They just want that bot turret trade instead. That is complete fan burden. Like we said, Tier, one, tier 1's being taken down unlocks a lot of the map. Um, this mid lane tower is half HP, so I think the play from Rising Tide are for next like three to five minutes is getting members mid lane and getting that mid pushed in and unlocking that mid tower because that allow allows a lot of warding, allows a lot of walking into enemy jungle without having to worry about tower. And I would like to see them instead of because because of Nameless having this Rift Herald, they can prioritize in any lane right now. Um, so I think Rising Tide have to fight back against that Rift Herald push with their own push. Um, but yeah, right now I think it is really good for Nameless right now because they do have a 6 0 Silas and he is building a lot more less damage and a more. Oh, he doesn't go for the Ionia either. Yeah, that. he went for this. He did go for the Sword Shoot. He is going for Zanya's second item, which I think is really nice for this team because of the amount of CC that he's thrown at him. Yeah, that's the finish code deck here. Ego is taking a bit of beating from Overrush here. Spell Shield gonna save in situation. Now has the Braum ultimate, does it get the knockup? Braum's gonna counter his own ultimate with his shield. Jet War tries to get the stun there. Gonna pick up a kill onto the Braum. It looks like Boulder's on the backside, but now he's in a 4v1. Zet War is gonna be dropping really low. Does Overrush pick up the kill? Looks like that's gonna be no. Spell Shield gonna block once the damage for Cadence there. Zet War is walking out of there. And that is just an overall win. No deaths, two to zero for the side of Nameless. Uh, I don't think they're gonna be able to get the push in the mid lane, but Defend has just got a free lane on top side. That was a 4v5. That was a 4v5. I'm reading it did come in a little bit late, but Aatrox was doing a lot of damage to that backline, but that Morgana binding, it just negates everything from yeah. him because he Aatrox can't needs to move to do damage 100%. right and so when he gets snared he's just a sitting duck he just sits there and takes and dps saw the damage from ego just like bursting down he does not have any resistance on that Aatrox so he just gets bursted down really quickly because being snared yeah. and it's just life uh, and it looks like they're i mean they're keeping ego in the mid lane here both teams just keeping their mid laners not deciding not to use their 80 carry support to hold up the mid lane. Yeah, I think that is a macro mistake. You always want to rotate your bot lane up the mid lane. I mean, Ego's so up. strong, he wins the 1v1 on the side lane. That's just a free side lane win. Both teams, there is a bit of a choke point that Nameless have to go through, and they've been zoned out by this Heimerdinger, and the turrets are going to make that even worse. I think they want Ego on a flank. Is he going to find the side angle? He is we'll not. To see. Oh, there's a very big damage coming out from the side. Nameless is just free poke as Gerb's gonna go ahead and land a huge ultimate on to go defend, but there's no killing combo, so he's gonna stay around. He has TP, he could back and teleport, but it looks like he's not gonna opt for that as well. Yeah, Both right teams now. just jostling. But I look, think... let's just be honest, poke's in the favor of Nameless. 100%, but I think Nameless, if you pull the trigger right now, look at the HP bars on Rising Tide. They just have to pull that trigger, put that Volley Bear in. Volley Bear does have ultimate soon, so I think they're just oh, waiting that to pull out. the trigger here. Healthy Ego is just going to run straight up through the middle. Is he going to be able to get on the back line? Yes, he is. Boulder oh is going to try to do the works on the other side, but that's a 1v1, and he wins it. Healthy Ego is going to try to get on Overrush, but he's just taking free DPS, oh and the team fight win is over for rising tide they weren't able to get to the jinx and healthy ego did not have a flank and 
I think they could have poked from some more. It's not like the dragon damage was getting low anytime yeah. soon. And Rising Tide was taking the dragon, so it's not like Nameless was like losing out on anything. I think if they had to engage there, Volibear ult was up in like three to five seconds, so they just had to wait out that Volibear ult yeah. cooldown. And then once that cooldown comes off cooldown, you sliver R, you just send it that Volibear R, yeah. and then you get that dive onto that Jinx and Healthy Ego and Merrick you just easily just like. I what will have to say, if I had the draw tool that LCS is, I would draw a path for Healthy Ego on the on the blue side of Dragon. You see there's barely any wards there. Yeah, Certainly no would have found the flank. They had the Rift Herald, so the bot push was in their favor, so Healthy Ego could have walked right over there. And with that angle, I think there's no way he doesn't kill Overrush. Yeah, I think he will just one cycle Overrush and maybe even Gerbs in process. And I think with that Sejuani, I think he wanted to steal an ult from Gurk because seeing that Sejuani ult it makes the flank a lot easier, but he didn't really get it at the beginning. Like, he got it like, oh. right before he started. I have to say, Tai Tom, we do not see his own yet. We have a. We have a cosmic have... drive. Yes, a cosmic drive in stand here hmm. for healthy. I mean, look, I it's like a good that. item on Silas, but. I think, I think Zonia's would've been better. 100% this game Zonia's would've been a lot better because the amount of CC that's layered from Rising Tide, Silas needs to like not be in the middle of that. So I think killing that Zonia's to prevent that, as well as like wait on his cooldowns because he does not have Ionians, so the cooldowns are a little bit longer. He needs to wait out those cooldowns and Silas without cooldowns and without his empowered autos isn't really a champion. So I think going Zonia's and laying those cooldowns go off cooldown is going to would have been really big for him but i think he's going oh gerbs to... running right into healthy ego and yeah it looks like he's just running right into his doom picks up a free kill on side lane and as we said finally look silas in the side lane look wins it easy and now they have free push and a man advantage on the map 100 <laughs> percent. and right now they have all four of their members well yeah four of the members top side for nameless and rising side only half four members so they can threaten vision around baron and they can't really match. The, so Juani is back. Oh, match that is this going to be a free pickup kill on Overrush? Braum preventing a lot of damage, but that ain't enough. Cadence is going to be able to pick up the kill as well. Actually, never mind. It looks like it's Zet War. Cadence doesn't get a single kill there. Unfortunate. Very. Oh, they can maybe look for this on the page right now. They could, but. they could, but I don't think they have knowledge of current members here. Now they should, but they get the turret bot side. So That's really turret, good. They and they have I defend pushing up as well. Yeah, they up? could have easily uh, contested vision or even start the Baron because they do see misery bot side. So when the jungle yeah, they is bot side, the, and, and Ego has TP, so they definitely had a Baron angle here. Mm -hmm. And defend is just sitting top side, getting this free farm and his free, being 0 and 4, but like getting all this farm, is really good for defend, especially in like any losing matchup. You always like want to prioritize farm because you can't really get a kill when you're behind so farm is just your way of getting gold and letting go defend get this farm it is a problem for rising tide because you're letting mordekaiser who we put behind early game get this small lead and getting a small lead can turn into a big lead and make a big difference but uh i see nameless hovering around dragon pit right now but dragon's not up for another minute 30. Yeah. Maybe they're trying to make a play down here, but nobody's down here, but I'll be Ego. Oh, he's going to go for another kill. Flash is over, Ooh. and then Gerbs flashes back to get out of that situation. Flash trade. Oh, that is a far out there engage from Sejuani, just throwing it, and they're taking some free poke on the back end. Mm -hmm. No Jinx here as well. I think Healthy Ego should just push bottom. Uh, there's no one there to match, and you will pull someone inevitably if you do. And then you can pick up free turrets elsewhere on the map. Overrush resetting here. They're just going to take the farm in the bot side. Dragging up in a minute. Titan, I want you to set it up. What is the advantage of en any team right now? Uh, Nameless already have a uh, priority down here. They haven't really set up much vision. I do think uh, Zetwar should recall right now and get some vision. I, I would say their division is way too defensive for the current situation. Look, they have yeah. two wards, one on two on their own side, and there's that likely will not be relevant in the upcoming fight. So I think it's a little bit of waste of wards currently. Mm -hmm. But they do have like the river advantage, so which I think is really good for them because 
it doesn't allow Ryzen's head to walk in because of the Morgana catch, the Silas catch, like, it's really dangerous for yeah. And with the way their team comm works, they want to be set up on the objective here. They're very terrible at engaging in. Mm -hmm. Just due to that Heimerdinger. Like oh, okay, they're... they get a free walk in, and now they... it's a completely even contest. That's exactly as last dragon happened. But maybe we see Healthy Eagle go for a flank, which he is trying to. He is okay. doing. Yeah, he is going for it now. They're going to oh, spot him on the flank, point. but they're going to have to respect him still on the 100%. flank. Right, and they're landing really free close. poke. All right, here we have the engage. Healthy Ego on the side, and now it's just a big blob of damage. And Cadence is just attacking Boulder on the front line. Overrush free hitting on the opposite side does get the shutdown. And now he's dealing damage, but is it enough? Healthy Ego on the side. Big B providing that, that damage prevention, and Overrush picks up the kill on Cadence. That's going to be huge. And now it's just Healthy Ego on his own. He doesn't have the Zonias. And now with the exhaust on top, isn't going to be able to pick up the kills. And that is another ace. I think Rising Tide is way better in the team fight this whole series. Wow. It is getting really hard to get onto the Sphinx. And I think they have to wait out that Silas Link because he didn't get all the way around. He only got to that Dragon Pit. Which didn't really let him access Jinx because there was still Sejuani there, there was still Heimer Tears there. It's really hard for him to land his uh, snare onto Jinx while there are so many obstacles blocking him. And then Jinx gets these free resets, and Aatrox is diving 1v2, 1v3 bot in their Nameless's bot, um, bot side during the fight, and Kaden can't really do anything unless some of the kills for him. So. Yeah, the value they're getting out of Boulder. The, the fact that he's chasing Cadence away means that Sivir's not getting any of that really, really OP AoE damage that we expect from Sivir. And here's so, my issue with Cadence's build right now. He does not have the Phantom Dancer, which I think is an extremely core item on Sivir, the way she works, because you want to be moving around. You want to be able to kite out everybody on the enemy team, mm -hmm. especially into Boulder, into Misery. You want to be able to dodge those spells really easy. You want to be able to get your prox of Kraken off really quickly. You want to be able to move through a lot of things. You can't just be... Even though LDR isn't a bad item, Phantom Dancer is just significantly better. I think it equalizes damage, in my opinion. And it would have helped him dodge Boulder's attacks a lot more. It would help him kite a lot more. Help him get access to backline, access to backline and follow up with um, Merit and Healthy Ego. I don't think it would put him in the situations he's in if he had Phantom Dancer. But he is going for the IE third, so... Which is a really good item. Yeah. Uh, now I question if Overrush is going for a Mortal Reminder. Uh, I don't know a why. A bit questionable it is... build. It should be yeah. IE third, for sure. It's definitely IE third. And I do not think Mortal Reminder on Jinx is good. You shouldn't be the one getting those executioners. You already have yeah. one on Sejuani, one on Aatrox. Like, you if Rising it. Tide has a coach, he's pulling out his hairs right now. Sure. I don't. I wouldn't blame him. <laughs> yeah, you don't. You don't want too much um, anti heal because that just prevents a lot of item power power spikes. And the um, called the Runance Hurricane. It isn't bad, but if you're gonna Runance go that, you good. have to. Runance is good, especially into three melee right now. But he needs to go out third, like you said. And that mortal oh, yeah. reminder, last whisper, isn't really gonna extend the way Jinx is fighting because as we saw last fight she did a lot of damage without um, LDR so I think LDR is like a bit too much excess and with IE I think she's just going to output a lot more damage especially in the condition of this game right now and Morgana is going for Shirelius which is my type of build for Morgana I don't think she should ever build AP on her because items are a lot really expensive in the AP side of things and Morgana yes. just benefits really well from Zonia's and Shirelia's because it allows her to blend her arsenals a lot more easily. Um, but yeah, right now they are setting up for the Baron, which I think how the Ego is going a little bit deep. He should be. Oh, oh does land the ult on the Gerbs. Looks like he's going to Zonia's a bit early. Mari is in the thick of it. Healthy Ego. Looks like Gerbs is going to flash out, so he's not going to be able to get the kill onto the. Meanwhile, Cadence gets picked off in the mid lane. That is a huge loss for the side of Nameless. They're still going to go for this fight, though. I really think they should back out. They Looks like they're going to pick out. up the kill on Namara. Boulder just doing huge amounts of work for his team. Healthy Ego. Looks like he's a sitting duck. He's going to give able to Ooh. get... Oh, he gets the counter shutdown, so that's a kill going over to him. But unfortunately, defend. defend is just in a 3v1. And, I mean, this is where Mordekaiser is really strong. 
uh, doesn't seem to be able to pick up the kill and barely misses it from the side of Zetwar. But yeah, losing Cadence so early, that might have been a win for them if that were not the case. Yeah, and now Jinx has her LDR, but she doesn't have any space to buy any components for AE, so I fear that she is going to go more reminder, and I fear that she's not going to be as effective as Cadence is going to be. He is IE right now, so Cadence is, in my opinion, a lot stronger than Jinx right now, or Overrush. And I think. Alright, looks like we have the IE for Cadence, so actually. I think Cadence is going to do more damage in the 100%. upcoming team fight over Overrush. We'll yeah, see if that is the case. Hopefully he goes PD fourth because PD is, like I said, extremely strong on Sephiroth and this team, especially with Aatrox being pretty ahead and with Sejuani CC, like PD is just going to be amazing. And the damage output um, compared to Overrush, significantly. Like, I don't think a lot of people see it. Even though Jinx does have, like, that AoE, Sivir is just, like, Bouncing Blade. You have her uh, Boomerang. Like, she is going to provide a lot more team fight uh, power. More than Jinx, right. but even if... Looks like we again have the 50-50 control of Dragon scenario. It's been the same scenario every game. And every Dragon fight. Card has won, has won oh, that every oh, time oh, here. Clean ace with Healthy I'm Ego not... looking for the flank. There's not very much wards for the side of Rising Tide this time. Oh. They're going to use Jinx to get mid prio, and then now, I think that was free damage on Misery that they did not realize they had. Healthy Ego on the flank, he's waiting, biding his time. Again, they have the poke victory. They can outpoke, and uh, I mean, Overrush should... isn't providing any ranged poke at all, playing super safe. Oh, Healthy Ego. Yeah, okay, Boulder. He's on to Cadence again! All right, we'll see if he can get the damage down this time. Now it's a big Look. ball up for Cadence. Never mind, he goes down. Boulder providing huge amounts of damage. Healthy Ego is super low. And now Misery isn't a 1v1, is going to lose it to the Mordekaiser. But now, Mordekaiser can't win the, the, the fight afterwards. And again, again, never... Rising Tide, they win that scenario again. It's At this point, you got to feel it's almost guaranteed Wait. with even positioning. Yeah, here's my problem. Uh, Healthy Ego did not get into that bush. Like, they had no vision in that... Um bush right above dragon pit so he did not he got spotted out by that ward really quickly so he did not exactly have like the flank he wanted onto jinx and overrush just went around into nameless's blue buff side and she just got free damage with the rockets like healthy ego merit and go to bed all grouped up and they just took significant amounts of damage which i think would be extremely avoidable if we played with healthy he did mess up the flank a little bit and didn't initiate as quickly as he thought he would, which yes. led to the same results as well. I, and I, I just, is... You just have to wonder though, Titan, like every single time Nameless lets Rising Tide set up on a position and then engages into Rising Tide, which is exactly what they want. And then yeah. Healthy goes not even on a flank. They did that two times in a row, now three times. And now you just have to wonder if they realize what's happening in this game. Yeah, because Cadence is just getting dove on. Like, all three times, Boulder is just on Cadence. Like, no one's really helping Cadence out, and Cadence is either dead or, like, nearly dead from Boulder, and basically taken out of the fight, which just leads to Rising Tide's fight fighting being a lot more in favor for them. And with Sivir dead, like, where is your DPS? Where is your threat? And like we said, right, like... Uh, completely unnecessary from Overrush there. Go defend is trying to get this kill on the Gerbs. Even though he put him in the death realm, he had enough turrets to place down anyway. Boulder on the side that. lane, and it's looking like this is not going to be defendable from the side of Nameless. Yeah, it seems like bot's already going to go down, and once he matches those waves down mid lane, how are you going to be For defensive? engage, it's going to be blocked though. Marit is on Overrush. Looks like he's going to go down, and now, it's going to be super damage coming out of Overrush. The Jinx gets the reset. Healthy Ego trying his darnness. Ooh, doesn't get it this watch. time with the stopwatch from the Jinx. And this is looking like a clean sweep of the series. Yeah, I mean, Nameless made the same mistake three times. I feel like after their first mistake, maybe I'll give it to them. But like after that second Infernal Dragon fight, we're just giving them the same position. And we're just losing these fights. And now they have an extra 18% attack damage and ability power and destroying us and it's really hard for them to win. 
but to their loss in the series. Alright, yeah, and it's looking like, unfortunately for Nameless, they're going to be dropping this series 0-2 to Rising Tide. Congrats to them, they played it out pretty well. I think they had a better understanding of their comps. And besides, you know, the stomp from Gerb's mid lane, it looks like Healthy Ego was not able to replicate it. And they have picked up a pretty strong victory in week one. Yeah, it is very convincing. And even though they were behind early in this um, game two, they brought it back during those Infernal Dragons. And with the, I feel like with two, infer with two Dragons stacked up early game with Nameless, you can make a lot more plays instead of fighting for dragons because you already have those two. So in order mm -hmm. for Rising Tide to be catching up, they have to wait another like 10, 15 minutes before they can catch up or even get to soul point with those dragons. That's what two dragons does give you. It gives you a lot of pressure on that instead of on dragging. You go into bear and you could be going top and mid and totally instead of dragon, which I don't think they did a lot. They just been contesting and it didn't work the first time, it didn't work the second time, and for the third time, it definitely didn't work, and that was what caused again to steam or Rising Tide, and led to their win. Yeah, uh, I have to point out, Boulder performed a lot better in game number two, and surprisingly, Gerbs ends up being the damage-dealing leader for his team, and then Cadence, I mean, with that Sivir IE finally built, picks up the second most damage in the game, so as we said, Sivir did end up doing more damage in these team fights than Jinx, and that's just due to build. I think Overrush would have had more damage if he opted for a different build in that game. And unfortunately, Healthy Ego was not able to carry this one out. So now, Titan, we have to we get the miraculous favor of deeming worthy of the title of MVP of this game. Who are you giving it to? I'm giving it to Overrush. I think even with his not so good early game performance, I think his late game and his team fighting and positioning was miraculous. Especially game two, as we saw in the last Drake fight, that um pointing out um healthy ego's flank, he positioned into nameless jungle instead of playing into healthy ego's hands and that's what led him to get those Jinx rockets off into the team fight and led to the team fight wins and I think he was a huge part in those fights. And we also saw a solo kill from him earlier before that dragon. And I think his way of playing Jinx, like he's like a really good Jinx player. And it shows a lot in his gameplay this series. And I think he played a huge role in for the wins for Rising Tide. All right. Well, I'm going to have to disagree. I think Gerbs is my vote for the MVP. Uh, most damage in both games. And... Look, I'll be honest, in game number two, his job was kind of easy. Just put down turrets and enemy walks into you and you just kill everyone or do a lot of AoE damage and then Overrush picks up all the kills. Fair enough. But uh, with the game one performance and doing his job really well in game number two, I think he's my MVP. But that means the tie break is up to you, chat. Who do you think deserves the MVP? It's up to you to, you know, make your voice be heard as who you think deserves it. Uh, for us, though, that's going to be the end of this Nameless stream. Ty Tom, we're going to give you the last words. Uh, nameless, it is the first game ever with this roster on a competitive um, league. And I think they are very, they're a very promising roster. I do think they have a lot of stuff to work on, which I think is given for any new team. And I'm excited to see what happens in the future and help see them improve. All right, we're going to be looking for that improvement next week in the next game. And, you know, that is very normal as we're going to be closing it out here. Congratulations to Rising Tide for picking up the win. Unfortunate for Nameless there. And that's going to be the first game of week one. Hope you guys enjoyed that stream. I'm Crims, and I was joined by Ty Tom on the desk with our producer, Flash for You. That's going to be it for us here. Hope you guys enjoyed the rest of your day. It's a lovely Tuesday. See you guys next time. See ya.